Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today I'm going to be answering a question I recently got in my messages that I don't know if I've actually answered before. How do you know what colors to put in your palette? So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'm still sick, I'm still under the weather, but I'm, I'm trying to push through. This is the first time I've worn makeup in, I wanna say two or three weeks. I've been looking really rough, but I've, I've decided to put my face on camera just for you guys and answer this question. So recently, like I said, I got a message in one of my Instagram inboxes um, of someone wanting to set up their new palette and asking, how do you know what colors to put in there? What should I start with? What should I have? And, you know, you look at my palette and I have a, a, a ton of colors and you might think that you need all these. And I'm going to tell you right now, you don't. So what colors should you put in your palette? First of all, I'm just going to go by saying that you don't need to use a palette where you put watercolor tubes in. That is a preference. Um... I started out with watercolor tubes and I've always kind of done it that way and I kind of shied away from pan sets until recently I had some gifted to me from Paul Rubens and someone sent me the Muno palette and for someone who didn't really like the idea of pan palettes before I actually have a lot of fun with those so if it feels like it's a little less overwhelming to get a pan set with already like preset colors go for it. Do whatever is easiest for you and whatever is in your budget. However, if you are wanting to set up your own palette with your own colors, something like this with some two watercolors, these are my Winsor & Newton, I'm going to give you kind of the lowdown on what to put in your palette and what not to, but disclaimer, these, this is my opinion. Strictly my opinion. There is no right or wrong way. Artists do it differently. Artists prefer colors over others and that's completely fine. I'm just going to show you what I like and what I suggest. So let's take a look at what I have. All right. These aren't even all of my paints. <laughs> I have a lot of them and no, I did not buy all these. If you have watched my videos before, you will know that I was gifted professional watercolors from a few viewers. I want to say like over a year and a half ago now and I was so grateful like I've I would have never bought in this huge tube of professional paint I couldn't afford that let's be honest um, <laughs> it, it's expensive and developing a collection like this can be really expensive and when I started out I didn't even start out with the professionals I started out with the Cotman brand which is way cheaper and in my opinion they're pretty great um, and I would probably still be using them if I wasn't gifted a bunch. Since I was gifted a bunch of these, like the ones that are kind of running low, um, I have purchased like these newer, these newer colors. I have purchased them on my own um, just to keep my collection going. But if you are looking to start cheaper, Windsor Newton Cotman are definitely my go-to. Um, and then once you feel like maybe you want to sell your work or whatever, you can definitely upgrade to professional. It is quite kind of twice the price though, like for a small tube. But I'm just going to show you the colors I have in my collection and what I suggest you start out with. So I have, I have 28 paints in my set. Um, my phone there I have 28 paints in my in my palette and that is a little excessive and I'm gonna be honest with you right now I don't use them all I just don't um, some of them have been there forever like this one and it just I haven't used it because it's not necessary and especially when you're starting out you don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on new paints especially if you're buying the tubes and they can get quite pricey there are some tube sets that you can get where they sell like a set of six or a set of 12, um, which are great to start if it's in your price range. But if you really want to kind of curate your own palette to what you like, um, I'm going to tell you what are some great colors to start out with. And we are going to swatch those colors so I can kind of explain why. So this is my little swatching uh, my booklet. 
Nicole Rubens, all that stuff. Just fun to keep all the swatches. And what I suggest is that you always start with primary colors. So we know primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. And you, you feel like maybe that's the end all be all red, blue, and yellow. You can mix anything with that. And you can mix a lot of things with that, but you can't mix everything with that because if you've noticed, there are different shades of reds, blues, and yellows. Like here are three different reds. <clears throat> here are three different yellows. Here are like 10 different blues. No, like about four different blues that I have. Okay. And it can get quite confusing, especially for beginners. So I'm going to say, start out, what's the minimal, the minimum, pal the minimal palette that I would start out with would be Thalo Turquoise, Windsor Red, mm, Cadmium Yellow, this is Cadmium Yellow Pale, but they're not too big of a difference and permanent rose. And I'm gonna tell you why these ones. Thalo Turquoise, I just enjoy. That's like one of my favorite blues. Um, there are two different blues that I would suggest getting if you wanted to go beyond four, and that would be Ultramarine, and I'll explain that in a second. Windsor Red is kinda like a middle red. It's not too orangey, it's not too dark, it's not too pinky, it's kinda just like a nice bright red. Um, cadmium yellow, this is cadmium yellow pale, I don't even know if I have it. It's more of a orangey yellow, but it's not too orangey. I love this yellow, I use it for everything and I find it mix well, mixes well with others. Um, and then permanent rose I like because the tricky thing with a primary color palette is when you only have red, blue, and yellow, mixing a purple is like super difficult. And it all depends if you have a warm or cool blue and a warm or cool red, which can be confusing. And I do have a video on that, which I will link below, but it really takes into effect how your purple is gonna come out. So I say, get yourself a pink, because pink is a great thing to add to your palette and it can create some beautiful shades of purple that your blue and red will not. Okay, so I would say those four to start, those are my preferences. I know some other people like Prussian, was it Prussian blue or um, Windsor blue? And some of these colors will be different with brands, but a lot of the colors will be similar. Um, but those are my four go to. So I'm going to just swatch those for you. Okay, so we got our Thalo turquoise. And then I'll tell you which ones I would add to this collection. Thalo turquoise, Windsor red, just to show you what it looks like. It's a nice bright, ooh, that's not bright. <laughs> that's because my paintbrush was dirty and my voice is so low because I'm sick. It's fine, it's fine guys. Okay, it's a nice bright red when your water is clean. It's fine, it's fine. Um, and then cadmium yellow. I just find it like it's a nice base yellow. It's not too orangey, it's just, it's just perfect. Those look like a really nice primary color trio in my mind. And then permanent rose, okay? I just loaded some new permanent rose in my palette. This is my favorite pink by Winsor Newton. Favorite, hands down, pink. Love it, love it, love it, love it. With these four colors, you can mix almost about anything and your possibilities are endless. I think I also have a video on using a four um, color limited palette, which is excellent, which you should try. And if you're thinking like, why would I only start with four? That's gonna be difficult. Working on color mixing, especially when you're starting out and only starting out with a limited palette is actually a great skill to develop. So if you are on a strict budget or a tight budget and you can only afford four or five colors, it's actually not bad for you. It's really good because then you're going to get into color mixing and color theory and it will just only make you a better artist. Okay, so let's talk about the colors that I would add next to these. So you heard me talk about cool and warm colors, which like I said, I'm going to link the video. It can get a bit confusing, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it totally makes sense. So this turquoise is a cool blue. And it's great 
for mixing greens and vibrant greens, it leans more towards the color green than it does the color purple when mixing. So a good alternative to have is to have a warm blue that would be really good for mixing purples. And in my opinion, the great one for that is French Ultramarine. So I'm going to swatch that for you just to show you the difference. This is a brand new one in my palette. You see the difference in that blue? And this is just gonna give you a really great additive to your palette, okay? And mixing colors with these two different ones are gonna give you different results, which are great. So for a beginner palette outside of these four, I would suggest getting a cool and a warm tone of each color. So that would mean an ultramarine or a turquoise or a Prussian blue. Um, for red, the the warmer, no, the cooler, I gotta remember this stuff. For people who like to think that I think I'm a know-it-all and I know it all, sometimes I get it wrong. So forgive me if I slip up, my brain's not working completely. Um, instead of giving it a different red, I would alternate it with pink, okay? So pink would be a really great option, would be a really great alternate to red, which we already have here. And then yellow, honestly, I don't see a huge difference or I don't really use it as much. An alternate to cadmium yellow would be lemon yellow, which is just a bit more neon, which I honestly don't use all that much, but if you wanted to have a warm and cool tone of each color, this one's warmer, it's leaning a bit more towards red. This one's a little bit cooler, it's leaning a bit more towards green. Um, again, if this is not making sense, go to the video that I will link below. It will make a bit more sense, hopefully. As for reds, um, another red that I find, especially in the Winsor & Newton line that is in a lot of their sets, is cadmium red. And the words cadmium red, it just makes you think that like, oh, that's, like, that's just a red. However, their cadmium red, which I'm going to show you, is very, very orangey. And I remember starting out thinking, oh, I need a red. Oh, this set has a red. It's perfect. And it turns out like this bright orange color. And if you were trying to mix a purple with this red and a blue, you'll know it turns brown because basically you're mixing blue and orange, which are complementary colors and mixing together would turn brown. So it's just like, I, I don't get it. So I don't ever really suggest getting a cadmium red color. I personally don't like ever use cadmium red. I will always use Windsor red. Um, if you wanted a different alternative to the the Windsor Red, a nice deep red, which I enjoy, and I have used a bunch, because it can be a little bit more difficult to mix, is Alizarin Crimson, and I'll show you, this like deep cherry red, which is really nice. So sometimes I'll have this like middle road red, and then this Alizarin Crimson. If you wanted to achieve that kind of orange, I find that if you just mix Windsor Red and Yellow, you'll get it. So. That's why I kind of eliminate the cadmium red out of my palette. Yes. Okay, let's get into greens because greens are my favorite. Um, it's my favorite color and I feel like I use them the most. You can definitely mix them with a limited palette and it's a great thing to do. But if you were to want to purchase a green, my ultimate suggestion would be sap green. I love me some sap green. I find I probably use this the most. I'm just gonna swatch it for you. Okay, it's a nice leafy green. And then the other one I use quite often, but not on its own. I use it to mix a lot, would be hooker's green dark. Hooker's green dark. I never use this green on its own. If you watch a lot of my videos, you'll know, excuse me, you'll know that I mix Hooker's Green Dark with purple a lot to get a really nice dark green. Um, I'll just show you that quickly just because that's like basically the only time I use Hooker's Green. It makes a beautiful dark green. But since then, I have discovered a different dark green all on its own. Like look at that beautiful green that you can get. Um, and the other green that I've started using, which I bought recently, which I love, is Perline Green, which is a dark green on its own. So you don't have to mix it. So if you were, like they're almost the same color. Look how pretty that is. Okay, so if you didn't want to buy Hooker's Green and Dioxazine Purple to mix, I would, I would suggest Perline Green. This is that one. 
perline green. It's beautiful. <clears throat> okay. And so those are my greens. Those are my go-to greens. Um, sap green, I really, really love. I have so many tubes of that. Um, hooker's green for mixing is great. And then perline green, just on its own, is beautiful. And then purples. Let's talk about purples. I usually like to mix my purples, but the one purple I really do find myself using a lot is to mix, but I also use it on its own, is dioxazine purple. Let's just swatch that for you. This is nice, deep, deep purple. And I rarely use this color on its own, but I will use it to mix. So I might take like my, oops, my permanent rose to get a really nice kind of mauve color or even mixing it with a blue to get a really nice lavender color. It's great for mixing and I do love dioxins in purple. So that's another color that I would love. Again, you don't have to get these. Um, I'm just slowly adding what I would add next to my palette if I had a choice, um, if you wanted to go that way. So now I'm going to mention some other colors that are really great to have in your palette, but are not necessary. These are things that if you would like in the future to add, they're a lot of fun to use and some of my favorites. Um, I don't want you guys to think that I'm trying to sell you on all these colors because you really don't need them, um, especially at the beginning. But once you develop a bit, it a bit more, they're great colors to have. Some artists will swear that you should never um, use a black paint, that you should be mixing your own black paint. True artists mix their own black paint and you know what, that's great. <laughs> I don't care. I don't like to mix my own black paint. I'm lazy. Um, and I use, no, that's not black. This is the black. I use lamp black. It's a nice black. And I, I like, I like black to use it. You know what? I just like pure black. I don't use it an awful lot, but it is there sometimes. So if you feel like you'll use black a lot, I do like lamp black. Another one I love and I do use a lot is Payne's Gray, which is this nice like deep kind of like indigo-y gray and I find the Payne's Gray on in the Cotman set versus the Professional are actually quite different. The Professional is a bit more blue and then speaking of dark blue I also love indigo. Indigo. It's a bit more bluey but like that's also really pretty. I find myself using those colors but also this is the thing it's like I can tell you all the colors that I use and you know I use a lot and in my palette and you should too but not necessarily because whatever you paint and your style may be quite different than mine so go with whatever your your kind of vibe is if you feel like you are the type to paint more dark and moody stuff you might want to go with these paints grays and indigos and like the darker colors so whatever your vibe with painting is do um i recently added this cobalt turquoise light i think that's what it's called right Cobalt Turquoise Light to my palette. I haven't used it a ton. It was just a really pretty color. I can't see myself using this a lot, to be honest. I just don't tend to do really, really bright things, but I added it in there because I wanted to. I had a cerulean blue in there before that I just did not like, um, so I don't. I just decided to try something new. So that's one, but again, that would not be a necessity in my palette at all. And then the last blue I'm going to talk to you about is cobalt blue which I actually do love I don't use a whole lot of or too often but it's a really beautiful color on its own um, and so that's one that I also enjoy okay so let me just recap because there's some that I have not touched on in here Ooh, one more that I do use often burnt umber burnt umber love me some burnt umber okay and that's about it Okay, so as you can see, there are some other colors in this palette I didn't touch. Lemon yellow, like I kind of showed you at the beginning, is just a brighter yellow. I find myself not using it that much. Yellow ochre, I didn't touch either, but I actually use that a lot. I enjoy it. Um, it's a really nice dark yellow, which is beautiful. You could definitely take your lemon yellow, mix it a little bit with purple not lemon yellow, your cadmium yellow, mix it a tad bit with purple, and get a yellow ochre, like that. Okay, there's ways to mix some of these colors, um, so you don't need to buy them. Um, orange, if you noticed, I didn't touch that, and I haven't touched this in years. I, 
you know what? I might more now that it's like coming up on fall, <laughs> but that's basically the only time I ever use it. It's not necessary. And you can make a really great orange. It's like hard to mix a bad orange when you have a red and a yellow in your palette. So it's not necessary. Reds, like I said, love Windsor Red, and I do use my Alizarin Crimson sometimes, but it's definitely not a necess necessity. Here, Opera Rose. Now, I know a lot of people that love this color, and it's a very, very neon-y, bright pink. I personally don't care for it. It's just too bright. Like I said with like the Cobalt Turquoise Light, bright neon-y kind of stuff is not my aesthetic so I rarely use it but if you think you would use it if that's more your style it's a great bright neon pink to get to have permanent rose love it oh am I not even showing you my palette mother here I have two magentas um, I never use them I just never use them you can mix a little bit of your permanent rose with purple and you'll get a, a magenta color not necessary Dioxazine purple love here I have mauve, and like I said, I mixed it here. You can get this color just by mixing dioxazine purple and a bit of pink. Um, hooker's green, love. Sap green, love. Perline green, love. This is a green gold. I'll show it to you. I don't like it. It like looks green in the palette, but then it's like this, like really yellowy-ish, goldy color, but I don't like it. I'm not a fan. Don't ever use, I don't ever use it. French Ultramarine Love, Turquoise Love, Cobalt Turquoise, Cobalt, Cobalt Turquoise Light is okay. I haven't used it a whole lot. Love Cobalt, Indigo, Payne's Gray, Mar no, Lamp Black are all great in my palette. And then here we get into more of the browns. Sepia, Sepia, whatever it's called, is a really dark brown, which I have used. But again, you can mix Burnt Umber with black to get that if you really needed to, not necessarily. This one, I don't remember what color this is, and if you can tell, I barely used it. It's like, yeah, because it's really opaque. I forget what this one's called. I don't like it, though. It's just in my palette, but I don't like it. Okay, so don't worry about that one. Burnt Umber I showed you, and then lastly, this one actually I do like, but I don't use it too often. I probably will now that it's fall. It's a really beautiful color. It's um, brown matter. Something. I don't. Even, I think this is like the last of it too. So I don't even have the the tube anymore. But I think it's like brown matter or something. And that's it. So that's what's in my palette. Oh, I'm not sure. This one is brown matter. I apologize for not being able to see it. But yeah. So that's what's in my palette. And I hope you were able to write down the suggestions I have. Please don't feel like you have to break the bank when you're starting out. It is really great to start out with a limited palette to get that, you know, color mixing technique down. And that's what I started out with. I think the five colors that I started out with were from a workshop. If I remember correctly, they were mauve, hooker's green, turquoise, permanent rose, and a cadmium yellow. Don't ask me why I remember that. That was like four years ago. But I remember those were my first five colors. So those weren't even primary colors, but that's what I started out with for months. And then I slowly added one tube and then I added another and it just slowly added on with my collection. And this is where I am now. So please don't ever feel like you have to break the bank to be a good artist or produce anything. Just work with what you can. And like I said, if a pan set is more your style, go for it. Whatever gives you the least anxiety and is the least overwhelming for you when you're starting because I want you guys to have fun with this and not feel the pressure to have it all because I definitely didn't and I didn't for a very very long time and that's totally okay I'm gonna stop rambling now I will put my top 10 colors that I suggest for beginners of the Cotman brand with links below um, and then the colors that are in my palette also with links below and the color mixing video or the warm and cool tones in case you're not familiar with that it's really great to know and it is a little tricky but once you kind of get it you'll get it and everything will make sense so i hope all of that helps i hope i answer some of your questions just realized i could have had my face on here a lot more um thank you guys so much for watching this video i really hope you liked it and i hope you learned something don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on instagram for even more have a great day, guys. Bye.